not only just two guys who had poured it out for the university for their entire careers, but it's the end for uh, Ingram and Ryan as well. And uh, Hubert Davis uh, understood that with all of it going on, they had a job to do. No, they've been really good at that all season, uh, eliminating or turning down the noise and focusing on what's most important. And what was most important was our preparation, our practice, how we played tonight. Um, even in the huddle, the guys just kept saying more to be said, more to be done. But I think it was also a motivational factor from the standpoint. They, it was, it was a really a desire for them, you know, to hang a banner and um, to at worst be, you know, co regular season ACC champs. And that's something that hasn't happened in five years. And it was something that this group desperately wanted to do. And I, they, they could win a national championship. They are they are that good. I mean, Jalen Washington is kind of a deep reserve. He shouldn't be, but he's a kind of a deep reserve for this team. And because he just doesn't have a great impact on any game, but he can play. And so you've got cover up front. You've got uh, multiple guys who could come off the bench and fill roles and are versatile and Trimble and Jalen Withers. Uh, I think they've got a very, very strong opportunity to go very far in the tournament. And once you get to a Final Four, and I think they can get there, I think they can win it. Uh, I put them a little bit ahead of Duke, even if I think Duke's going to win the game Saturday night. I put take Carolina a little bit ahead of Duke uh, because I think their defense ultimately is better. And I think their defense uh, over the last you know game and a half has looked like the defense that carried them through that long winning streak. Although, as all respect to the opposition, I want to see that against a better team. I want to see that against somebody better than Notre Dame. I want to see it against somebody better than NC State. And they'll have an opportunity to do that on the road at Cameron on Saturday night. Uh, all right. Yesterday, you know this already, that Brian Burns was franchise tagged. Here's how it sounded from the one and only Adam Schefter. They tag him today, but I believe they tag him with the idea that they still would be open to trading him. And the question will become where and when do they wind up dealing Brian Burns if there's a package that's attractive enough to Carolina. But just because the tag was placed on Brian Burns today doesn't mean that Brian Burns is going to be in Carolina. Keep in mind, the Panthers are missing a lot of draft picks that they gave up last year to Chicago to trade up for Bryce Young. I think they'd like to replenish some of those picks and in return, Brian Brian Burns can be the man that gets that done. Yes, he will. Joe Person, who joined us earlier, in his column today in The Athletic, where he explains a lot of different things that Carolina either has already done, could do, blah, blah, blah. I was under the impression that it was two firsts and a third. It was two firsts and a second. And now I'm even more angry than I was... When we re when we like uh, rehash the incident yesterday, so we need to fire Scott Fitterer three times now. And Matt. I just for the life of me, yeah, for somebody who has been in the league five years or four years, actually no, it's five years now. How do you look at somebody who is not a quarterback and say we don't want? Two firsts and a second for that guy. How do you look at that and say, nope, don't want it? Unless that player is right now being measured for a Hall of Fame jacket. There's no yeah. planet no. on which you can keep your job after turning that down. No. He should have been fired last year as soon as they turned it down. David Tepper should have gone, wait, wait, wait. You said no to what? Yeah. Get out. Exactly. Well, but maybe it was David Tepper who said no. I don't know the answer. Mm-hmm. But that is the definition of malpractice. Well, I mean, that also goes into the whole quarterback thing with C.J. Stroud versus Bryce. Whose decision was that? You know, not that it would have made a difference, but still. Who's making well, these calls? Well, David Tepper insisted that was a collaborative decision, and maybe it was. I still don't believe it It matters. As good as C.J. Stroud looked and as good as he becomes, as long as Bryce Young is, uh, is good enough to be your franchise quarterback, 
how good CJ Stroud uh, becomes is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is Bryce. Of course, trading up from nine to one to get Bryce, that's the mistake. The mistake is not taking Bryce over CJ, where 25 teams would have done the same thing. Yeah. Maybe more. It'd just be nice to know who's making these decisions, so they're not doing that anymore. And here's all you need to know about that. If the two prospects as players were rated the same, then everybody would have taken C.J. Stroud. But they weren't the same according to how they were viewed. Therefore, the Panthers took the quarterback they felt was the better player to deal with the size issue after the fact. Houston, if they had the first pick, would have taken Bryce Young. And if they had me making decisions, I wouldn't have taken any quarterback last draft. Mm. But that's a different thing. There you go. <laughs> they, um, you know, as it look, they should have stayed at number nine mm-hmm. and built their team. Yeah. And then you add the quarterback when the rest of your team is ready. Right. They should. They were. They were bad. They were damaging themselves just to get a quarterback because oh man, now we have a quarterback. Yeah, but we can't protect him or uh, or give him anybody to throw to. Yeah. Oh, so what? Square peg, round hole. Yeah. Awful. Awful. All right. Uh, Elliot Johnson, former big leaguer on the uh, on contracts recently signed, Shohei Otani and more. Next. Serving it up hot and fresh every day. Adam Gold on the North Carolina Sports Network. Pulling up to Mickey D's just for drinks? Oh yeah, that's me. Nothing extra, just perfection and a straw. Coming in hot for the coldest cups on the block. Because there are drinks. Then there are drinks from McDonald's. Mix things up with any size lemonade or sweet tea for $1.49. Perfect with our classic fries. Price and participation may vary. Cannot be combined with any other offer. Ba-da-ba-ba-ba. Does managing your health care feel like a full-time job? Bounced from one doctor to the next? All the forms, the bills, the not a bills, the... Press forward and repeat these options. Does health care have to be this way? At Kaiser Permanente, all of us work together to make health care easier. And with integrated care and coverage, all you have to do is focus on your health. Learn more at kp.org, Kaiser Permanente, for all that is you. Kaiser Foundation Health Plan of the Mid-Atlantic States Incorporated, 2101 East Jefferson Street, Rockville, Maryland, 20852. Totals, over-unders, there's live betting within games. You can bet the next bucket, the next goal, the next, I don't know, penalty. All of that stuff. Go to FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. FanDuel.com, promo code Adam Gold. And be the first to know when FanDuel goes live in North Carolina. Very exciting time. Must be 21 or over and present in North Carolina. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Availability subject to regulatory approval. I like up my Old Spice Fiji Aluminum Free Dry Spray to keep that 24-7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. It's like catching waves in Fiji. Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. <laughs> My old spice is missing. No! Imagine pulling up to PNC Arena on your very own Hurricanes Harley Davidson motorcycle. That dream can become a reality. The Law Tigers, Tobacco Road, Harley-Davidson, Shiny Side Paint, and your Carolina Hurricanes are teaming up to give the Ultimate Caniac a custom Hurricanes 2023 Harley-Davidson soft tail. The bike will be given away live on the ice at the game on April 5th, and you might just win it. Go to KaniacsBike.com. That's KaniacsBike.com for your chance to win this custom-painted beauty of a bike. Do it now. Enter today. Wireless headphones. That'll be $200. I'll use my Capital One Quicksilver card. Now that's a hit. You used the Capital One Quicksilver card, which makes you the hero of every purchase. With Quicksilver, you earn unlimited 1.5% cash back on every purchase everywhere. I wanted running music, but unlimited 1.5% cash back is pretty heroic. Good instincts. Every hero needs a theme song. The Capital One Quicksilver card. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com for details. What? 
New scratch-offs are out? That means new chances to become a North Carolina Education Lottery Winners Club member. Yeah, in the Winners Club, I'll reinvent myself. I won't go by just plain Todd. I'll go by Toddrick. I'll get a gold jacket, play my saxophone again. I'll stop and smell the flowers. Call my mom more. Oh, wrap it up, Todd. It's Toddrick. This month's tickets back $370 million in total prizes. The Winners Club awaits. Must be 18 to play. Approximate or to winning range from 1 in 2.93 to 4.24. Problem killing up on 877 Hey, hey, what do you say? John Forsland here for my friends at Buffalo Brothers. What a great time for sports. The college hoops tournament in hockey is in the home stretch. I call games in Seattle and around the country, but when I'm back in the triangle, I head right to Buffalo Brothers. Make sure you visit Buffalo Brothers for all the big games. Always great specials like half-price appetizers Monday through Friday, 4.30 to 6. Dine in, carry out at all five triangle locations and online at buffbrothers.com. Aw, oh, man, now I want wings. This is Adam Gold. That was a big deal to me this morning. I'm sorry if the heathens that we had on for the roundtable, Jeremy and Travis. My people. Didn't even understand <laughs> Jurgen Klopp. It does sound different. It feels like a clogging thing. Like, I should be uh, river dancing. The Adam Gold Show. <laughs> Just a few weeks from opening day in Major League Baseball. Isn't that exciting? And we have international games. We have secret weddings. We have the Phillies deciding that Zach Wheeler is a $42 million pitcher or something to that effect. Elliot Johnson, uh, the one and only Durham Bulls legend, former Brave, uh, Royal, uh, Ray, was it Rays or Devil Rays when you were there? Huh. Um, big league, just the Rays, but I was a part of the old regime. I signed with the yeah. Devil Rays back in the day. All right, let's get to let's get to let's start with the money. the The Philadelphia Phillies are not uh, averse to signing enormous contracts, whether it's Trey Turner or Bryce Harper or Zach Wheeler, over a hundred and twenty million for three years. Mm-hmm. Um, I look, Zach Wheeler is uh, an outstanding pitcher. Mm-hmm. That seems. That puts him in the you're one of one type category, no? Well, he he's exceptional. Market values are what they are. Uh, they didn't want him getting to free agency next year. They knew that um, you know if he was going to go to market next year, he would have he would you know the Dodgers are going to step in yeah. and you know to give him you know who knows how much and defer it all, right? <laughs> so right, okay. I think I, they were smart to lock him up. He's an ace. Uh, he's deserving of every penny and then some. He's been more healthy than Scherzer and Verlander. Um, you know, I think wow. that he, he's proven to be durable. I think that he is worth uh, the, the price, given that the, the Phillies were up against the wall. And I'll give credit to ownership uh, for going out there and spending that money because, you know, Baltimore needs a starter. Oh, my gosh. And they're not paying. Um, you know, Boston needs a starter, you know, especially given the, the injury – um, they've got the, the elbow injury that they've got. So Montgomery's probably going to cash in and head over there. It's going to upset some Rangers, but you know, or Rangers fans. But you know, I, we'll see how that market materializes here in the next couple of days. Elliot Johnson is joining us here. My only fear is that, and the, it's funny that Zach Wheeler is the healthy one because earlier in his career it was touch and go, right? With uh, mm-hmm. with him being healthy, but I mean, it seems like forever ago. He was the uh, the return for Carlos Beltran from the Mets to the Giants. That's how far back we go with wow. Zach Wheeler, right? That's that's where it all began. He was a Giants farmhand uh, and obviously huge prospect, and that's what the Mets got. Part of the return from Beltran uh, was, was Zach Wheeler. He'll be 35, though, in the first year, early in the first year. Of the of the first year of that extension, it's a little little risky, but uh, I, what it says to me anyway is that even if you're not one of the high profile teams, and I'm using air quotes here that, that people can't see on the radio, um, th- th- there's money. So the Orioles, who are like like absolutely allergic to prying open their wallets and have been banking cash for the last several years, uh, the Orioles are afraid or unwilling to like. Uh, to extend themselves when winning is what makes money, no? 
It's an absolute, it's a mistake. You know, they, they've got such a good team, Adam, that they could, you know, one win difference could be the difference between getting to the World Series or not. I mean, I, you know, you think about the opportunity that you have to bring in a guy that can pitch deep into October, and they're, they're not taking advantage of it. Uh, I, I think it's a mistake. I think they've got an exceptional team. I think they need to shore up their, their staff. Uh, you know, Grayson's been hurt. Uh, yeah. He's exceptional, no question about it. But, you know, you can't count on arms being healthy. To your point on Wheeler early in his career, you know, with the Mets, I'm sure we're picking a scab here. No. He's injury, injured there. He comes over to the Phillies, and he's been, he's been really, really good. Um, even though he gave up, you know, almost a home run to uh, the new holiday, the shiny new toy the Orioles have uh, yesterday, uh, <laughs> hit a ball off the wall and a hanging breaking ball. But, you know, I think if, if they went out and grabbed somebody, it would certainly signal to everyone that they're all in and they want to win. And you're in the, the AL East, you better do everything you can and not take anything for granted because, you know, you, who knows what's going to happen with their young if, if Rushman gets hurt, that window will close up pretty quick. He's right. that important to the team. So go get somebody and make the most of 2024 and don't wait until 2025. It seems like they've been saying next year for the next, for the last how many years now. Elliot Johnson is here on the Adam Gold Show. Big picture thinking, because the uh, I think the Rays have been very good about figuring out who they want to keep going forward. They did this with, uh, with what, Evan Longoria such a long, long time ago uh, when, what, 10 years into a big league career, they gave him a, what, an eight-year contract. It was crazy, but uh, it was obviously smart. And you you pay a little bit more uh, at the beginning, um, but you save yourself big money at the at the back end. And it works out maybe not exactly for the player, uh, but if the player is willing to do that, uh, then it works out. I mean, in some respects, the Braves have done that with a lot of their players, right? Uh, extending them early. And like I've, I've said for years that, uh, w- whether it's uh, Ozzy Albies or Ronald Acuna, those are the stupidest contracts ever from a player perspective, but they were willing to do it. And you 